on behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to find the intervals of increasing and decreasing of a cubic function. So we're given f of x and we want to find the intervals on which this function is increasing and decreasing. We have a cubic function and the way you deal with this for intervals of increasing and decreasing, you start off by finding the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to, taking the derivative of this, 3 times a third is an understood 1, x squared plus 6x, we're taking the derivative of 3x squared, and the derivative of negative 16x is negative 16. Now the next step is to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So when we set this derivative equal to zero, I see a quadratic here that will factor very nicely to x plus eight and a x minus two. All I'm doing there is finding two numbers that multiply to give us negative 16, which is the eight and the negative two. And when we add the eight and the negative two, we get that sum of six. Setting each factor equal to zero, just like in your college algebra days, we get x is equal to a negative eight and x is equal to a positive two. These are the two spots that we call critical values of this cubic function. The next step in this process to find intervals of increasing and decreasing in this function is I'm going to take these two numbers, these two critical values that we found here, and I'm going to put those on a number line. Uh, you know, over here we have negative infinity, and then obviously the negative 8 would come before the 2, and then we go off to positive infinity for values of x. Make up some test values. In this case here, make up any test value you want that lies to the left of negative 8. So for test values, I'm going to pick negative 10. Now pick a test value that lies between negative 8 and 2. That is going to be 0 or any other number that lies between negative 8 and 2. And then pick a test value that lies to the right of 2, such as 3. These are just random numbers, but they lie within these intervals. Between negative infinity and negative 8, we have negative 10. Between negative 8 and 2, we have 0, among many other numbers. And the same thing over here with the 3. 3 is definitely to the right of 2. The derivative is actually a nice spot to look to determine whether a function is increasing or decreasing. And these are the three main things you want to know about increasing and decreasing functions or constant functions when you're messing around with derivatives. If your derivative at some value is greater than zero, then your function is increasing. If the derivative is less than zero, your function is decreasing. If your derivative is zero, then the function is constant. Now we'll talk more about the constant piece, dealing with maximums and minimums in a future tutorial, but for now we're talking about increasing and decreasing. Well, we already know where the derivative is equal to zero. The derivative is equal to zero at negative eight and two. These are our critical values. Now what we can do is we can take these test values and we can plug them into the derivative and all we care about is the sign. Let's take this negative 10, let's plug it into the derivative. Better yet, if we do this, so f prime of x, in this case we're taking our test values, Let's take negative 10, instead of plugging it into here, let's plug negative 10 into these two spots. So if we take negative 10 and we plug it into here, we are going to get a negative number. Sure, it's negative two, but all I really care about is the fact that it's a negative. So we're gonna take a negative number times, now let's plug a negative 10 into here, negative 10 minus two is negative 12, but all I really care about is the fact that it's negative. So we're taking a negative, times a negative, that equals a positive. Therefore, f prime of x is greater than zero, so f of x is going to be increasing for all numbers to the left of negative eight. This is guaranteed because we are dealing with a continuous function. This is a polynomial, a plain old cubic. It's continuous everywhere and differentiable everywhere. Let's repeat this process for zero. If we take zero and plug it into here, we get a positive number, so we have a positive times, plugging zero into here, we get a negative, so we have a positive times a negative. That's the signs that we get when we plug zero into these two spots in our derivative. Multiplying a positive times a negative, we have a negative. Finally, let's do the same thing for three. When you plug three into here and three into here, you end up with a positive times a positive, therefore we can guarantee here that we have a positive derivative. So 
what does this mean? We're taking the derivative at these x values, these test values that we picked. We don't want to plug negative 8 and 2 back into the derivative because we know the derivative is 0 at these two spots. That's what we solved up here. But since the derivative is positive here, we can say that the function is increasing. The derivative is negative, we can say the function is decreasing. And finally over here, since the derivative becomes positive again, the function starts to increase again. Now when we write this out in interval notation, we can say the function is increasing from negative infinity all the way up to negative 8, not to negative 10. You could make up any test value to the left of negative 8 and you're going to end up getting the same type of signs guaranteeing that your function is increasing. But it's going to increase all the way up to negative 8 because remember, at negative 8 our derivative was equal to 0. That's what we solved up here but the function is increasing up until that point. And then we also have another spot where when we are to the right of two, so from two to infinity, this is also where our derivative was positive, implying that our function is increasing. The only spot, the only interval where our function is decreasing is when we are between a negative eight and a positive two. So that's going to be our interval of decrease. Um, notice here we got that negative derivative, which implies our function is decreasing. So this is the solution to the problem. Now let's look at this on a graph. So here we are inside of Desmos, and I have this function graph. That's that original cubic that we were dealing with. And I'm just going to tap on this max here and this min. Well, notice as we move from left to right, this function is increasing all the way up to an x value of negative 8. This is one of our intervals of increasing. From negative infinity to negative 8, our function is increasing. Then from negative 8 to a positive 2, this is values of x, these are our intervals. From negative 8 to 2, our function is decreasing. And then finally, as we go from 2, uh, x value of 2, to positive infinity, look at what the function does. It increases. It goes up. That matches this perfectly. We said our function was increasing from negative infinity to negative 8 and from 2 to infinity. Again, uh, rewind, look back at that graph. Those were our intervals of x and then our function was decreasing between negative 8 and positive 2. We do not use brackets around any of these because the function is actually constant at exactly negative 8 and 2 because that is where our derivative was equal to 0. And there you have it, an example of intervals of increasing and decreasing dealing with the cubic function. We also looked at the graph, and then what we're going to do in future videos is we're going to explore the derivative that we already found in the video and how we can interpret the derivative and f of x together to uh, determine these same ideas. And then we're also going to apply some ideas for the first derivative test, and we'll even talk about the second derivative test and concavity. But all of that is going to be built up in the future tutorials. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.